Hey, what is going on guys? Today we're taking a look at this kit here from Wave. This is actually going to be my very first time ever building any Macross kit. This is the Macross the VF1A Batroid production type in 1 100 scale. So the reason why I like this one is because it has this little bit more kind of simpler design to it. It's not quite as colorful. It's not quite as kind of stuff all over the place as some of the other designs. And some of the other ones are not like really too complicated, but I just really like the kind of simple, almost very sort of similar to like just a gym sort of, of the Macross universe, I guess. That's how it looks to me, so that's why this one was a little bit more appealing to me than uh, some of the other designs, which is the reason why I've never really built any Macross kits, because I'm not really super into the designs, but this one did look pretty cool. I've been meaning to check one of them out, and so this one is the one that I chose to check out. So really cool box art here on the front of it as well, I really like that. Just cool, simple, kind of nothing really too crazy, it's not like a crazy action pose and like laser beams and explosions everywhere. We do have kind of an explosion there. In the background but it's a pretty cool look with this now this one just makes it in the batroid form but this does include if i remember correctly parts in here that will allow you to make this into the gerwalk form if you also have the uh, fighter version of this so basically you need two different kits and then with the parts included with this you can make it into the gerwalk form i i think so let's check the instructions uh for sure but if i remember correctly that's the case with this so this is uh six in the line of these kits here from wave taking a look over here on the side of the box you can see just the front and back view what the kit is gonna look like when it's all painted again pretty simple design but it's got really nice details around on there uh, we got some information over here all in japanese around on the opposite side we've got some more information there and pretty much just kind of the same thing there it is on top of a base, which I'm not sure if is included or not. Hopefully it is, because it looks like a pretty cool base. We'll find out here momentarily once we get this box cracked open. So let's do just that here by popping this box top. And you can see it's not really a huge box, and there's not really a ton of parts in here, really just a, a couple of runners worth of parts. So it should be a pretty simple build, pretty straightforward build. We are gonna have some water side decals, which look pretty nice. Basically just a whole bunch of numbers, the UN Space EU logos there, some different uh, kind of the Macross logos, and just a little bit of stuff there. So not a ton of decals, but again, the kit doesn't look that huge. So just a couple of decals to spice that up a little bit, but I actually do have some other Macross decals that I can stick on there if I want some more, or just kind of any of your standard generic costume markings should work pretty well as well. Now for the instructions, it looks like we've got two different parts here. And this is the part that I was talking about for how to make this into the Gerwalk form. So yeah, it says you need the VF-1A fighter and the VF-1A Batroid kits both. And then you can kind of lose some parts that you don't need from those. And then use some different parts that are included with this kit to then build that up into the uh, Gerwalk form, which is going to look like that. So that's pretty cool that you can make that. It's just a shame that you have to use two kits to do it. So it's going to be a little bit costly then at that point. But if that's what you wanted to make, it does look pretty cool. Course, so it's got the instructions there for making that but we're just going to build it up as the batroid so on the instructions there just got the box art once again down below here uh, this is just the parts list actually just listed out there in text we don't have an actual illustration of the runners it looks like on the back side though we've got the paint guide so again just if you wanted to recreate the actual official colors it's got those laid out there for you as well as the decal guide is here as well where to place the decals so we got a couple of nice reference photos there and then for the construction, it's just going to be relatively simple here, it looks like. We've got the head, the waist, just a couple parts there, the body over here, and the body. And then onto the legs, the legs, the legs, the arms, arms, arms. And then the last couple pages here is just going to be the hands, uh, the gun pod, and the stand, it looks like. Do we have the stand in here or not? I don't see those parts here for that, so I think this is maybe just the stand parts. Ah, yes, and it looks like the bottom base part of that is included with the fighter, unfortunately. So you have to have the, the fighter uh, jet version of this in order to make the full stand as well. So that's kind of disappointing, because if you have these parts to make the arm, then what are you supposed to plug that into? I don't know. We'll find out here momentarily, once we get the kit all built up and everything. But let's just run through the runners here. We just got a few of them. So we've got a polycap runner here in gray, and you can see we also have the little strap, which I believe is for the rifle that is also molded in this polycap uh, softer material. And then runner A here, like the first few runners, is molded in this kind of very light tan kind of color. So it's a pretty cool color. The label up here at the top says VF1 Batroid. And so these, this kit actually, for the most part, is just only different from just the other different versions of the Batroid, just basically in the head, I think, the body, arms, legs, everything is all going to be mostly the same. So this runner is not really specific to this kit, as most of the runners aren't. And the same thing here on runner B as well. You can see for our hand options, it looks like we've got closed fist, open hands, and then one rifle holding hand there. So you've got the handle of the rifle molded together with the hand, which is 
A little bit annoying, you had to paint that or mask that, but it's not the worst thing in the world, it shouldn't be too difficult. And then we're going to see for the rest of all of our tan parts for the main body. Again, some really nice details around on this, so that's going to be really nice once it's all painted up. And then we're going to be getting into our gray parts for this. You can see there's the parts for the rifle, some joint parts around right here, some bend parts, the part there for the stand and everything. And then runner F here is going to be a couple of just clear parts in there for that. And then we're skipping ahead to runner H here, and this is the parts basically for this production type head. So like I said, it's just going to be different basically in the head from the other versions of the kit so this is going to be the parts that are specific to this version of the kit especially and then here on this is a runner J this is going to be the parts for making the Gerwak form so you have like kind of different knee joints and this kind of different part there for the body for making it into the Gerwak form if you have the fighter kit as well so that's it for all the runners as you can see there's not really a whole lot there so once again it's not going to be a, com a very complicated build but just straight out of the box I'm thinking it's probably going to be lacking in a lot of different like little smaller color apps and stuff so it's definitely going to benefit from some painting but for the time being let me get this all built up and then we'll see how it looks. And alright, so here's how the kit is going to look once it's all built up and put together. So I hope for those of you who are interested, you were able to turn tune into the live stream build of this. If not, that's stored here on my channel, so you can go back and watch that if you wanted to see the actual building process of this. It went together pretty quick, and as you can see, it looks not bad straight out of the box. You've got all the detail there, which looks fantastic, but it's definitely missing some colors. It's not very color accurate. To how it's supposed to look but i think once we do a little work to remove a couple of seam lines on there and get this all painted up it's going to look absolutely fantastic and also the size is also not that large it's going to be right about the same size as your typical bandai high grade 1144 scale kit so i think if you can get this kit for a decent price and you're able to put in a little bit of work on it, it's definitely going to end up being a really nice kit now i don't have any experience with other larger scale kits from either Hasegawa or Bandai, so I don't really know how it's gonna compare to those. I guess I'll find out maybe someday if I end up building some more Macross kits in the future. But as for my first foray into building a Batroid, I gotta say it was pretty interesting. Definitely right about what I expected. I expected it to be not really the most amazing build I've ever built, but definitely it's got a lot of detail there and with a little bit of love, I'm sure it's going to end up looking really nice. All right, so then just to go over some of the articulation that you're gonna to have to work with here, obviously the head will rotate around. You can also move that up and down just a little bit up really to like there and then down to it's about it. This little bit on the top of the head, which I thought was just an antenna, someone informed me during the live stream is actually a small little cannon on the top of there so that moves forward and back like so you know I have that nice little clear piece there on the front but really only the front little camera is supposed to be clear so I want to just cut a little square of masking tape cover up the front of that and then you have to paint around the outsides of that the shoulders are just on a ball joint so you can just rotate that around pretty normally you can also bring the arm up to about 90 degrees to the body there it's gonna be about the upward extension of that and then you have a couple places where you can rotate this in the upper arm actually above and below this section of upper arm there you can rotate that because that's just kind of free in there, although it's very tight at the top, so I feel like that is, I think, supposed to be just forward like that, so basically you're going to want to rotate that just above the elbow joint there. As for the elbow joint, you're going to be able to get that to about 90 degrees, and that is going to be it. So then the wrist is just on a ball joint, very straightforward there, nothing too special with that. Around here on the backpack, these wings do open up, although they don't really, they're not really particularly meant to, I don't think, in Batroid form, but you can open this up. You just have a lot of great detail around on here. In the front, you have some rotation of the kind of waist, as it were, here basically at the nose cone of the fighter form, which you've got in there. And then the legs as well are also attached via a ball joint, so you can move those around. You can bring it up all the way around and everything like that. At the knee, you're able to bend that once again at about 90 degrees. That is about it. And then the foot will move forward and back a little bit like so. Side to side, sort of because it is attached via a ball joint but it doesn't really have enough room to move side to side because of the legs there so we really can move that just a little bit forward and back and that's about it up underneath the feet though you do have some nice detail up inside there and just all around you can see there's plenty of nice detail around on this now just to go over where some of the notable seam lines are on this obviously here on the front of the thigh you have a seam line between the two right and left halves of the lower part of the thigh and then here on the back of the thigh a little bit there as well as for the, like the lower legs though it's covered up by there's a piece here on the front and back of the leg just pull this off so you guys can see what i mean there so you just got two halves and then this piece will cover up the front and back so you don't need to worry about that seam line there now up here on the body on this section there in the center you have a seam line right down the center of that and on the like nose cone part you have a seam line down the side but it's kind of really hard to see because of the legs kind of covering that up you have a seam line down the sides of this center part there on the head you have a seam line that's visible there at the top a little bit and then around for the arms you have a seam line at the top of that upper arm part and then on the forearm 
all the way down the back side and then all the way down the front side of the forearm as well. So just a couple, it's really not that bad. On the rifle here or the gun pod, you have a seam line down the center of that, which is also pretty understandable. And you'll notice here the little strap came off. This is, once again, made of polycap material, so it's really soft plastic, which is nice. It makes it actually able to bend well, but just is sort of like clipped onto the back here. Here in the front there, it's not clipped on. There's a piece that actually loops through that to hold that on there securely, but it's not really held on super securely there at the back. And as you can see, the handle of the gun pod is actually molded together with the hand, so you will have to do a little bit of masking or hand painting just to make sure that's all in the correct colors. But some nice detail on this, you got the kind of triple barrel up inside there, and it holds onto it pretty well. Obviously, the, the, the design of this, like the back end of that, is gonna be getting in the way a little bit of the arm, but it holds onto it well enough. In the manual, they show it doing like a sort of two-handed grip, sort of like this with the other hand reaching around up to support under the rifle, and it kind of just barely is able to do that with the articulation that it's got. It's just able to do some sort of pose like that if you wanted to, so that that's fine. And then once again, as for the other hands that we had included with this, we have the open hand for the right side as well, and then a set of closed fists for both the right and the left side. And I'm having a little bit of trouble getting these pieces to fit together fleshly. I think I need to figure out what's not fitting together just quite right, but this one's okay. The other one's not quite fitting together very well. But those are your hand options for it, and that's pretty much it, aside from the water slides, which we saw before, and then the part here for the base. Now, without having the fighter version of this kit, you have nothing to plug this base into, so this piece is not really gonna be able to do you much good. It does hold the kit well, if you had something to plug it into. You see, it just sits up on there like that, so if you made some sort of custom base or something, you could just attach that onto there, and it'd, be, it'd work well enough. But as it is, just if you have just this kit on its own, there's not really much you can do for an actual base for it. So that's gonna just about do it for my first adventure into building a Macross kit. I gotta say, I've heard people online making it out like Macross kits are like for advanced builders or something, or they're somehow like for real modelers only, and those people who are used to just building Bandai Gunpla kits all the time, you know, need to step up their game if they're gonna be building one of these kits or something like that. I've heard that sort of sentiment around, and honestly, it's, it doesn't really fly, I think. I mean, this kit was different from building a Gunpla kit. It was not difficult by any means. Does it have some seam lines? Yes, but Gunpla kits, plenty of them have seam lines on it as well. I don't think that anyone should be intimidated from building one of these kits. If you think that you're maybe you're not up to the skill level or something to build one of these, then just don't worry about that, I would say. It's a perfectly fine kit, albeit a little bit simple. It doesn't really have a whole lot of parts. It's got a couple of seam lines on there. It doesn't really have the best articulation in the world, but for what it is, I think it's a really cool little kit. And it's got fantastic detail all around on it, so I think once this is painted up, it's gonna look awesome. Even if you don't wanna paint it up, just do a little bit of panel lining on it, throw some top coat on it, and it's gonna be very uh, monocolor. It doesn't really have a lot of color separation on there, but at least once you bring out the details and maybe give this a coat of flat coat, I mean, for the minimal, work efforts, then it could still be looking pretty cool, I think, up on your shelf just for all the detail on it. So it has a really cool, unique look to it. So hope you guys found the review helpful and informative. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.